Welcome. Thank you for tuning in to Neptune Knives. To start, I want to say thank you to Jason over at Knife Gallery in Orange for loaning me this knife to review for this channel. I have one day to record this video because obviously he doesn't want this knife out there. True countrymen and peacemakers don't promote division but unity. I start by saying this because there are people that make broad spectrum statements regarding Asian manufacturing. I try to put only high quality videos out. And so I script these videos, I discuss these topics with the people in my life. A company that is based in their country and produces their own product, if they sell internationally then they are good countrymen. You know, they're bringing new money into their economy. Now where this becomes wrong is when a company produces someone else's product. So not only are they stealing, uh, they also then sell it internationally. You know, trading for labor or materials is not what I'm referring to. But stealing design that's American made and then to sell it back to Americans. And there's a fine line, there's still difference that even imitators won't cross. Certain badging, you know, Boker might be like Bacher, something will be different. But I guess in 2014 things are starting to break down because I have never seen something like this. This product has copied everything possible, even down to the barcode sticker and box. You can see then the font for paramilitary. Here's the US one. Here's the, the knockoff. The, the font seems to be wider, perhaps almost like photocopied. It's just stretched out. It's not as a fine font. Like The lines are more crisp and lean on the actual real product. The spider. Here's the fake. Right here. There's that little upward inside notch that's not done the same. Same. They've gone to really great lengths. The, the logo here is the same. I can tell you, yeah, yeah when both are next side by side, this one, is, the font is just a little bit more bold. But you're not going to be able to do that unless you have a real next to a fake. So the only real way from the outside to tell is look for that. Here's the fake. It's missing that. If you're used to vellum paper, like tracing paper, a traditional uh, Spyroco certificate feels like uh, printer paper. If the stock feels lighter than printer paper, uh, feels more leaning towards vellum, it's a little bit more transparent even, then you have a, a copy. You know, the way they say thanks, Spyroco crew, even the dang information at the bomb, Spyroco way, Golden Colorado. On the fake, the print is fairly, almost kind of faded. It wasn't a very rich, solid black. The true Spyroco paramilitary twos, uh, the print is a solid clean black line. Now onto the actual knife. I'm not certain if this one came tip up, but typically they come tip down. For most people, and we're talking, I'm a knife maker, and so I'm looking at the way it's ground, the way it's machined. For most people, you're gonna have a really hard time, but uh, there are some things I can take from my experience and uh, help you guys then catch. And it's really all the details. First thing is the position of the logo. It's a little bit larger again and a little bit too high. When they laser engraved it, they cleaned it up afterwards. On the, the knockoff, they laser engraved it and left some of the burn. The actual screws on a real Spyroco, the bomb side is flat. Here's the knockoff, you can see the, the screws To be honest, these screws have actually just basically more depth. Uh, they'd actually be a little more stout. Uh, you can see there's a straight edge right here. So they kind of dome and then go straight. Uh, the Spyroco ones, they, they go really flat. Like it domes and then hits the scale. Um, also, the hardware on, on a Spyroco should be a little bit, I want to say it looks bead blasted. The, these screws have a slight non-reflective sheen a little bit of a, of a powdered look. 
knockoff, they are the conventional, very shiny uh, looking, you know, stainless steel screws. Spyroco chamfers their uh, lanyard tube. And they chamfer it looks like with a sort of metal drill bit because I see some skipping, some chatter. So you can see some, some lines going like this as it travels around. And it should be chamfered basically, meaning there should be a slope going down into the tube. So it kind of makes those, those corners not straight. Uh, here you can see the tube is flat, flush with the scale pretty much. So there's a sharp edge right on the inside that if you did put your paracord it would keep scraping. The stainless steel used for the, the knockoff on the on the back spacer, the sort of lanyard tube, is very reflective. It like pop metal. You know, it looks like it's got a lot of chromium in it. I mean it looks like you know chrome rims rather than this sort of you know, kind of rough uh, again sort of powdery looking you know, more gray stainless steel that's on the traditional spider coats. On the knockoff, the bevels are this is the bell right here. It's pretty I say it's it's wide. It makes the profile look kind of round. Uh, when you look at it from this way you can see that that beveled edge and it it just has a sort of more contoured look. Uh, starting to border a little bit on organic and if you're familiar with Spyrocos they don't have that. I remember in one of my videos I had said that Spyroco doesn't do it too much. They keep a certain level of like flat and a sort of stiffness, rigidity so that it looks not too organic, not too crazy. So kind of I was saying this kind of classier look. I think it was in my Dodo review. It's not how Spyroco does their style. Generally speaking, American-made products are better quality, we say, because we have a lot of regulations, a lot of government regulations in place to ensure quality. But unfortunately with this, you know, you can see there's gaps on the top part of the scale, but none here. Here on the knockoff, there's a gap here, but none there. You're not going to be able to tell. The way this jimping is cut on the Spyroco is very saw-like and crisp. The way it's here, it's a little bit looks like it's done it's a little bit less pronounced, a little bit less crisp. Again, really hard to tell. You know, when I first saw the knockoff and it didn't have a normal pair of military two, I thought the, the phoniness was right here. How the, the compression lock has that gap with the, the handle scale. But upon uh, coming home and looking at my inventory, that's that's not actually a, the case. But there was something that was odd about it and that was right here on the real Spyroco they rounded that corner right there on the knockoff you can see it's just straight straight corners I can't tell you if it's just they didn't perhaps clean the, the pivot hole they didn't know they were supposed to do that um, the point is here it's stiff in action, but it's not tight because it's still side to side play. I'm going to guess then that there's still a bushing because there's still side to side play here on the Paramilitary 2, a US made, but it's, it's a smooth action. Looking at the screws, a, even on the a real Paramilitary 2, there's scuffing, there's uh, some inconsistencies. The best my camera is going to show you is that the Torx fitting inside those, uh, the Torx cut out inside the screws. On a real paramilitary tube, looks a little rough. The knockoff, you can actually see on camera, it's very distinct, a little bit too crisp. Like I said, you can see here just on camera, they look a little messy. They're not stripped, by no means. They're just kind of messy on the inside. The grind, it's going to be really tough for somebody. The, the difference here is that I would say perhaps based on the precision, the person who did this, both of them, they have sort of like a hand rubbed, um, I would guesstimate here is they're using like the buffing wheel. Um, it's not like sandpaper, it's more like they did uh, somewhat remove the, the sharp corners uh, with a very soft method of like, how do I say, deburring. 
and but they did a little bit too much here on the knockoff meaning here on the knockoff you can see it's very rounded off on some of the spots like the the, the corners like right there it, it looks mm, if it starts to look too handmade meaning if, if it's like a very handmade you've seen some high polish mirror polish knives and they seem kind of round and, and gooey almost the knife looks almost plasticky then that is how you tell because a, a normal paramilitary 2 still has a level of sort of machine likeness a, a level of crisp lines I mean obviously you know Sparka wants to produce a very uh, crisp clean looking well made knife now this is just telling you that this flat grind isn't smooth throughout. There's like sort of indentations, it's sort of fluctuating. Um, and I can feel that here on the US made one. Unfortunately, same thing here. I can feel that there's like a dip in the blade, in the grind. The tip here on this specific paramilitary 2 knockoff uh, has sort of been knocked off. It's been ground kind of poorly. The The issue here is that that could be a mistake of just the person working on this knife and that could possibly happen on a normal paramilitary 2. On a real paramilitary 2, that spider isn't like something you can really feel. It's flat and flush with the blade, like it's not a, it's almost as if it wasn't laser engraved. It's, it's very, it's not very prominent. Um, like on my knives, it's laser engraved, it's burning, it's, it's actually an indentation. Uh, this is very much on the surface and I don't think my camera can catch it, but it looks like they've gone and lasered a second time around the profile to create a sort of copper colored, basically a burnt colored uh, outline. Perhaps two different heats of laser engraving. It's very cool. It's almost like the red and black theme. On the knockoff, it's just black. It looks like a marker almost. It's just laser engraved. They didn't add that little extra detail. Because that's a fine detail. That's something that they've even copied the, the, the logo of the maker. Again, Spyrco is a little bit more lean. This is a little bit more compact and bold. Again, really hard to tell. And uh, again, the only distinction here is the boldness. And how this, the Golden Colorado here on the USA one, it's like a, a very, not very hot laser. They didn't put the full temperature and it kind of just lightly engraved it. Didn't really take any material out. Here on the knockoff, same thing, they didn't really remove much material, uh, but it's inconsistent. The, the engraving here for the name, you can see a 3D effect, an indentation, in person. On camera, probably won't catch. Then here, it's got bold, burnt colored lines. It's just, there's a lot going on with the laser engraving. A full-time maker trying to survive, they have to increase uh, productivity, and, you know, wire jetting is just removing all the stock removal basically. If you're not hand foraging and you're starting with a sheet of metal rather than wasting all that metal, sawing it down, grinding it to shape, creating the profile, which is stock removal we're talking, having just a machine cut that all out, but then you still have to do all the rest, which is, in my video I discussed this, in Sparco they've, they've gone in and cleaned this hole up. I mean when you look at the hole it should have no, it should just look like polished lines going like this. Here, Thankfully they've forgotten and they haven't done that. At least they've done a little bit, but there's a speckled look. Looks like almost like a forged or hammered look inside. Very hard to show this on camera. You see those little dots and specks, like those little, just doesn't look clean and polished lines like that. On a normal paramilitar 2, all of that usually is looked at and cleaned up. The internal liners. Uh, the skeletonizing. At a real paramilitary too, you're going to see those, those how do you say those, the, the edges, the sides. You're going to see vertical grind lines. You can kind of see them reflecting over there. On the knockoff, you see that messy sort of water jet. Uh, you see the, you see it, it looks messy in there. So now the final thing here is a guess. Based on my experience of making knives, I know that water jet cuts at an angle. On a normal paramilitary tool, 
the jimping here is, is in no way water jet, it's, it's ground, you can see the grind lines. Here, there are those spots again, you see them? That sort of hammered on a forged look like you see the little speckles inside the, the finger hole, you see them also here. That's not from wire jet because then these would be cut diagonally. Or they would, uh, one side be more shallow and the other side would get more deep. So what that means then is the possibility that this is pop metal. Meaning that this entire blade shape wasn't water jet cut out of a you know flat sheet of metal but was basically how you say like it's basically poured into a molding and formed meaning this is very very cheap metal or not at all at the level of knife steel so this is my contribution to the knife community and I hope you guys do share this video uh, get the word out let other people see this so they can spot this fake